Good evening, everyone. White Witch 110 here. How was everyone's Friday? Ours was good. Came home, went and got some more groceries. Before the messy weather on the weekend, now they're calling for it to happen on Sunday, which is hubby's birthday. <laughs> this photo here is of a peleated woodpecker. Look at that beak. Never mind. Look at those. Scary. That's one big woodpecker. Now he's actually covering a photo of the gentleman that we're going to, I'm going to be speaking about this evening. He is very well known in Ottawa. Unfortunately, it is due to his death. And the person whom they believed at that time was responsible for it, I will be telling you about that gentleman, but that will be on the anniversary of his hanging. Now this gentleman I'm going to speak to you tonight about is Thomas Darcy McGee. Now if, oh what am I doing? I'm thinking I'm on my phone here. If you go on the haunted walk, you definitely will hear about this gentleman. Now I have a few photos here. This is a younger picture of him. Mr. McGee was born on April 13th, 1825 in Carlingford County, Loth, Ireland. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. L-O-U-T-H. He died April 7th, 1868 at the age of 42 in Ottawa, Ontario. He was raised a Roman Catholic by his parents. His mother taught him the history of Ireland. His father was employed by the Coast Guard when they moved to Wexford. Okay, we'll skip over that one. An older photo of him. He was schooled by Michael Donnelly at an illegal school. Thomas was eager to learn. When his mother passed in 1833, his father remarried in 1840. Due to the bad relationship with his stepmother, he and his sister sailed to the U.S. in 1842. He found work with a Catholic newspaper in Boston. He became lead editor in 1844. He wrote of Irish literature and politics. He believed at that time that Canada should become part of the U.S. This, of course, was due to the Irish opposition to British rule. In 1845, he returned to Ireland, becoming an editor of The National. He also became politically active. In 1847, he married Mary Teresa Caffrey. They had six children. There was a warrant for his arrest due to his connection with the Irish Confederation and Young Islander, Irelander Rebellion of 1848. Thomas dressed as a priest to escape and return to the U.S. While living in the U.S., he became intensely conservative. He did not like the Republican republicanism and democracy there. Thomas moved to Canada in 1857. He spoke with Catholics to work with Protestants to bring Canada together, to be a strong alliance with Britain. He was successful in assisting to create the Canadian Confederation. 
Thomas is one of the fathers of our confederation. He had gone against the Finians, which in his younger years, he shared their view. They were against British rule in Ireland. In 1857 in Montreal, he published New Era. In it, he attacked the Orange influence. Irish Catholics should be represented in the assembly. He promoted modernization, economic development through railway construction, fostering immigration, high tariffs to encourage manufacturing. In 1858, he became a member of the Legislative Assembly <clears throat> Sorry, of the province of Canada. In 1861, he earned a law degree at McGill University. He became a minister of agriculture, immigration, and statistics with the Conservatives formed in 1863. That's Hubby on his phone. Now this is his a cast of his death hand. As a delegate in conferences held in Charlottetown and Quebec, he wanted education rights for the religious minorities in Canada. Finians were a group of Irish nationalists. They wanted the U.S. to take Canada from Britain. Thomas spoke against this. After Confederation, Thomas was elected to the first Canadian Parliament in 1867. He represented the writing of Montreal West. November 5th, 1867, he delivered a speech regarding the mental outfit of the new dominion. He suggested the nation should inspire creativity and ingenuity of its own people. The top hat. April 7th. 1868. Thomas is in Parliament late with a debate. It is after midnight when he walks home to his boarding house on Spark Street, only a block south. It is Mrs. Trotter's boarding house. Opening the door to enter, he was shot in the neck from behind. Someone had been waiting for him. Several people appeared on the scene, but there was no sign of the shooter. Later, Patrick J. Whalen was arrested for the assassination of Thomas Darcy McGee. Thomas was given a state funeral. Now I'll show you. That's this one. Hurry up. That's this one here. One of the largest in Canadian history. There was a crowd of 80,000 people in Montreal for it. And at the time, Montreal's population was 105,000. That's, I'm supposing that's where his casket is. Okay, where did we leave off? Okay, we'll go here to his. Oh. Former Prime Minister Brian Mulroney unveiled the monument in 1991 in Thomas's birthplace in Ireland. His parents' grave is marked by a plaque presented by the Canadian government. August 20th to 22nd in 2012, Thomas Darcy McGee Summer School was held in Carlingford to commemorate and celebrate his legacy. Now the next one I'll show you. Okay, it's this one. Come on, up we go. Okay. At Spark Street and Elgin Street in Ottawa. Oh, no, that's not it. Sorry, my boo-boo. Where? Oh, this is it here. 
Okay. And the Haunted Walk. Their office is just down here. Okay. At Spark Street and Elegant Street in Ottawa, you'll find Darcy McGee Pub. This is not where he was killed. But they do have very good food here. They have little Yorkies that are amazing. Okay, enough about the food. I will next show you. Okay, there is the family vault. Is that what you call it? I'm not sure what you call that. Isn't that terrible? But that's the McGee family. Now, I did find a picture with a number of people in front of this, but there was no caption as to who they were, so I couldn't come out and say that it was relatives of his. So I didn't bother to uh, add it here. This is one of the schools named after him. Toronto Catholic District School Board named a school in his honor, Darcy McGee Catholic School. Ottawa Carton, Carlton Elementary Catholic School Board named a school in his honor as well, Thomas Darcy McGee Catholic School. In Gatineau, Quebec, Western Quebec School Board named a school in his honor, Darcy McGee High School. So that would be this one. In Montreal, the English Catholic School Board of Greater Montreal honored him with Tommy Thomas Darcy McGee Catholic High School, which unfortunately closed in 1992. A riding in the province of Quebec is named in his honor, and two villages in the province of Saskatchewan. One is Darcy, and the other one is McGee. In the St. Mary's University in Halifax in 1986, set up a chair of Irish studies in his honor. The Canadian Museum of Civilization purchased, now I haven't seen this, and I haven't been over there in a while, purchased the gun used in the assassination for $105,000 at auction. And then you've already seen this one. You will find the cast of his death hand in the Bytown Museum. So the reason why there is the death hand is because of where he was shot. And I found this, which I didn't know, is something that he had written. I didn't know that he was a poet. There it is for you if you'd like to read it. This is twice had I sailed the Atlantic or twice dealt an exile in the West. Twice did kind nature's skill restore the quiet of my troubled breast. A moss upon a rift tree, so time is gentle, cloak cloaking did the way they wrote back then and I will show you this is the wanted poster that they had two thousand dollars back then I imagine was a considerable amount of money and this is the building here. Now, I would have to go on Spark Street, but I'm, I'm not sure if that exact building is still there. It should be Toronto House. <laughs> and this is... A statue of him up on Parliament Hill. Now, I don't know who that is. I'm sure there's an explanation of it when you go to this statue. Um, that's 
this one here. Oh, there's another one. This is the plaque that is on that, mo is it a mausoleum? Crypt. The family crypt. That's it. That's on the family crypt. Now, this here I found interesting. Questioning if he foreseen his sudden death. I'd never heard of that one before, but uh, I haven't even read it yet. I just seen it and I thought, that's interesting because I've never heard this mentioned before. But there it is. You can stop it and then take a read of it. So that this is why. The main reason why he is spoken of in the places where I've heard his name is because of his death. And it is the leading story that uh, the Haunted Walk opens up with when you go on there. They don't take you to, to where the spot is, and the, there is a plaque there. They just uh, speak about it outside of where you've seen the pub. So that's all about Thomas. Now, the gentleman who, isn't that beautiful? Abandoned. Uh, the gentleman who was hanged for his uh, for his murder there is only one picture I read today of him and that's it but that one I will read to you on February 11th as I said it's because it's the anniversary of his hanging and I figured what I could do is give you some more of the um, of the crazy stuff that happens to a cleaner or at least a hubby and I if you'd like uh, now you remember us taught remember me talking about all the different things that had happened the poop in the toilet the poop on the toilet the birds flying around um, the guy's lunch in the fire cabinet. After all this happened, and also telling our manager in regards to the paranormal experience, which is in a previous video of mine from October, our manager at one point laughed and asked us, why does all this stuff happen to you guys? We laughed back and said we didn't know. Now, water. We've had water come through a ceiling. It was in an electrical room. We heard it and alerted the maintenance to it. When we opened the door, the water was missing all of the equipment. It was just going down the little path where, the, where uh, whomever was going in there would walk. We found that weird, and then... We assisted the maintenance gentleman in trying to find where the water had come from. We went to the room above, we went to the room above that, and checked all above. There was no water coming out of any of these rooms anywhere. So to this day, unless he found out after we left, no idea why that happened. Now, this particular building, the gentleman also was responsible for another one just two over and we were in the basement and we could smell wet cardboard so we're trying to find out where the smell is coming from and we end up in front of this door we can hear this noise and I'm saying to hubby and he's saying to me we're looking at each other it's coming from in there 
So, we get uh, the maintenance guy. He opens up the door. All this, fo this isn't fog, all the steam comes out. And here there was a cracked pipe in there. And the tenant storage boxes, a couple of the tenants, they were in there. Cardboard, so you can imagine. So we went, we got the tenants that were concerned and help them to get all their boxes out. So luckily, I don't think much of anything was destroyed. And then I, we both suggested that the adjacent room be open. And sure enough, the water had started to go underneath the wall from there into the next one. So we were able to clean that up as well. Now, one afternoon in particular, Hubby got a panic call from the maintenance gentleman. And he was saying there were bubbles flying out of a pipe in the parking garage. And he had no idea where the heck these were coming from. So we went downstairs because he wanted us to clean it up. And we said, no problem, you know, we'll take care of it. We, I think he gave us a hose to hose it all down. And when he left, Hubby was laughing at him. What is it? He had put old soap we had and a couple of other things that would generate soap down the drain, not even thinking that it was going to come out somewhere. So actually the panic was all because of Hubby putting stuff down the drain. It was all harmless, but um, just the, the reaction from this guy was crazy. Now, during all the different places that we have worked, we've met a lot of great people on our travels. As a matter of fact, in one building, one of the elderly women that worked there, and she turned 90, she was an Order of Canada recipient. And I had remembered seeing her on TV and forbid me, but at the time, I thought, why are they giving that to a woman of that age? But after meeting her and her zest for life and for the, the subject in which she was so passionate, I could understand why. So there's just a few, a few more knocked off of there. So I hope you enjoyed finding out about Thomas Darcy McGee, one of the fathers of our confederation. And just a few little ones about some of our escapades and happenings. So I hope you all have a great rest of the Friday evening, whatever's left. And that you have a great weekend. I'll be here again tomorrow night. And hopefully all of you have good weather. And we're hoping that maybe all this bad weather will just pass us by instead of dumping rain, freezing rain, snow on us. So I'd like to thank all of my loyal subscribers for joining me this evening. I appreciate you all very much. And Patrick O'Keefe, thank you for subscribing. Maybe we'll see you at work next week. And anyone just passing through, feel free to check out any of the other videos I have. If there's any that particularly speak to you, if you like them, consider giving them a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. I will get back to you. And share it out if you feel anyone else that you know may be interested. And while you're here, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you'll know when I upload. And until tomorrow night, as always, love you all and ciao for now.